Insta360 X4 is here and it comes with a few features that could not only change the market for 360 cameras but also the market for action cameras in general. It's capable of taking 360 shots in 8K, producing high resolution videos after reframing and the X4 also comes with several AI features that not only improve the image quality but also make it easier to edit 360 videos and speed up the reframing process. I have tested the X4 extensively over the last few weeks, have taken hundreds of shots and can now take you exactly whether this camera is really that revolutionary and what it can and cannot do well. There are a total of 25 things you should definitely know about the X4. The Insta360 X4 can shoot in 8K at up to 30 frames per second. Of course, this doesn't mean that both lenses shoot in 8K. Rather, the two sensors of the X4 take shots in 4K and the two shots are then combined by the camera to create a 360 8K image. You then select the optimum framing in the app and export a standard non-360 clip. Previously, with the X3 or other 360 cameras such as the GoPro Max, the result of the reframing was a clip in a resolution of 1080, which is rather low for today's times. And the reduced resolution was particularly noticeable on a high resolution screen. The X4 now finally supports reframed clips in a higher resolution. The clips are exported in 4K, but the real resolution due to the reframing is more like 2.7K. As you can see, however, the images look super sharp, high resolution and great. Perhaps the biggest disadvantage of 360 cameras compared to traditional action cameras has thus been eliminated. For me, the new 8K 360 mode is one of the biggest advantages of the X4 and also the main selling point. 8K is available in 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. Of course, shooting in the extremely high resolution of 8K also has disadvantages. For example, recording in this resolution produces larger files. Compared to recordings in 5.7K, the files are around twice as large. However, it is still within reasonable limits. A 360 recording in 8K requires around 1.5 GB per minute. More importantly, the 8K files can be easily edited with a relatively normal computer. For example, I use an M1 iMac with 8 GB of RAM and have no performance issues when reframing the 8K files. The software runs absolutely smoothly even with 8K recordings. Of course, this is also due to the fact that when reframing in the app, you work with a preview image in a reduced resolution. I can therefore confirm that editing an 8K recording with an average PC is possible without any problems. Reframing 8K recordings on a smartphone is also no problem. If you can do without the resolution of 8K, the X4 now offers frame rates of up to 60 frames per second at a resolution of 5.7K. This is also a useful new feature. 60 frames per second not only enables slow motion of up to 40%, it also results in a very fluid and natural look, which is particularly interesting for action cameras and action shots. The image quality, at least in terms of resolution, at 5.7K is similar to that of the X3. By the way, I'm about to do a detailed comparison between the X4 and the X3. You'll find it on my channel soon. As far as resolution and frame rates are concerned, there is another new feature. In addition to 5.7K60, the X4 is all also able to shoot in 4K at 100 frames per second. This means that spectacular 360 slow motion recordings are now possible in an acceptable quality. This is also an innovation compared to other 360 cameras. Of course, you still have to reframe the 4K recordings, which clearly reduces the image quality at this resolution. But as you can see, the 360 slow motion shots are now quite usable. Resolution and frame rates are of course not everything when it comes to image quality, although they are important, especially because the resolution in particular has always been the great weakness of 360 cameras. The colors and the look that the X4 produces also look very good. Overall, they look nice and rich in contrast. In addition to a standard color profile, the X4 also offers the color profile Vivid with slightly more saturation and a flat color profile. What is not available is a real 10-bit lock profile for heavy color grading. It must of course be said that the X4 has two rather small image sensors, which of course cannot keep up in every respect with the large sensors of the best action cameras such as the A Pro. This is noticeable for example when it comes to the dynamic range. It is not fundamentally bad, but of course not at the level of an Ace Pro either. For a better dynamic range, the X4 offers an active HDR mode. In this mode, different exposures are used in order to obtain more details in the very bright and very dark areas of the image. The very bright areas in particular, so the highlights, are protected from burning out. However, this mode is only available in a resolution of 5.7K with up to 30 frames per second. And it also has a few disadvantages in terms of image quality. For example, there is more image noise in the dark areas than in standard video mode. 
For me, the active HDR mode is therefore not one of the X4's particular strengths. In addition to video and active HDR, the Insta360 X4 offers a variety of other recording modes. There is of course a time-lapse mode and a time-shift mode for hyperlapse recordings. These two recording modes now also support higher resolutions. 360 time-lapses are possible in 11K and time-shift recordings in 8K. Both shooting modes can produce very cool results. And there are various photo modes a star-lapse mode for time-lapse recordings of the starry sky, and also a revised bullet time mode. With bullet time, you can achieve a very special effect by rotating the X4 around its own axis with a dedicated accessory. Bullet time was already available on the X3, however, the resolution and therefore the image quality has also been improved for this shooting mode. Bullet time recordings are now available in 5.7K with 120 frames per second or in 3K with even 240 frames per second. And as you can see, the shots look really cool. For taking photos, including 360 photos of course, with PureShot, the X4 offers a very special format. With PureShot, the images are also processed with the help of AI in order to achieve a higher dynamic range, and in particular to improve the image noise. And I have to say, it works very well. Especially in poor lighting conditions, this format produces significantly better results than the standard photo format. This makes it a very useful feature for anyone who wants to take 360 photos with the X4. In addition to a 360 mode, the Insta360 X4 also offers a single lens mode. In this mode, videos or photos are only taken with one of the two lenses. The advantage is obvious, it is not necessary to reframe the shot. On the other hand, you cannot choose the perfect framing and also lose the advantages of the invisible selfie stick effect. In this mode, you use the X4 in exactly the same way as any other action camera and can share the shot immediately without having to edit it. In single lens mode, you can shoot in 4K and at up to 60 frames per second. So basically, with the X4, you get two cameras in one body. The image quality in single lens mode is good, but it can't quite keep up with the image quality of a current action camera. That would also be asking too much. In my opinion, the great strength of this camera is definitely the 360 mode, even if the single lens mode can sometimes be very useful. And the X4 offers a special solution for all those who don't feel like reframing, but also don't want to do without the invisible selfie stick effect and the extremely wide field of view of the 360 mode, the Mi mode. In Mi mode, the X4 actually takes a 360 shot that is automatically automatically reframed by the camera. The camera automatically keeps the subject, for example yourself when vlogging, in the center of the shot. Since it's actually a 360 shot, there is also an invisible selfie stick effect. In my opinion, the Mi mode is an extremely useful feature that was already available on the X3, but has now been significantly improved. This is because the X4 is now able to shoot in Mi mode at up to 4K and 30 frames per second, so in high resolution. In 2.7K, even frame rates of up to 120 frames per second are available. However, there are limitations to this, as the recording still needs to be opened and stabilized in the app for settings above 2.7K and 30 frames per second. In these cases, no reframing is required, but you have to open the recording in the app and then save it. But even recordings in 2.7K 30, as you can see here, are quite high quality and are perfectly adequate for social media. And even if this mode is called Mi mode, you can now also change the lens and film another person, who is then automatically held in the center of the frame. This is also new. The new Mi mode is an absolute highlight of the X4 for me. I don't think anyone who has never used a 360 camera is aware that the image stabilization of a 360 shot is outstanding and can easily compete with any action camera on the market. This also applies to the X4. The image stabilization is absolutely top. The X4 also offers a 360 horizon lock feature, which always keeps the horizon straight, no matter how you hold the camera. And unlike with a standard action camera, the horizon lock does not lead to a significant crop of the shot. The stabilization and image quality of the X4 are therefore very good, especially in good lighting conditions and when shooting in 8K. Nevertheless, the X4 is of course not a camera that is particularly suitable for low light situations and it cannot keep up with the best action cameras such as the Ace Pro in these situations. This is simply due to the significantly smaller image sensors. Compared to the X3, the performance in low light has improved somewhat. And the shots really don't look bad, as you can see here. But if you need a 360 camera with which you often have to take shots indoors or in low light, 
For example, for professional purposes, I would still go for the One RS 1 inch, which however does not have an 8K mode. 8K, 5.7K 60, 4K 100, improved image quality, all of which could lead to higher energy consumption, shorter battery life and overheating. I'll tell you whether this is actually the case in a moment. To enable the new features, it was definitely necessary to make the X4 slightly larger than the X3. The Insta360 X4 weighs around 200 grams. That's about 25 grams more than the X3. Here you can see a direct comparison with the X3 and the One RS 1 inch. Yes, the additional weight and the larger body are of course a disadvantage. And you will notice it especially if you want to use the X4 frequently on a helmet. Overall, however, the increase in weight and the additional size compared to the X3 are kept within limits. And the X4 is visibly more compact than the One RS 1 inch. The X4 may be bigger, but it also has an improved and more powerful battery. And this has paid off, because the battery life of the X4 is great. In 8K30, the X4 is able to shoot for 1 hour and 15 minutes. In 5.7K30, even for 2 hours and 21 minutes. The battery life is therefore excellent, and especially in 5.7K30, clearly exceeds what you are used to from classic action cameras. It is also important to note that the X4 doesn't have a 30 minute recording limit. It can therefore create individual files that contain a recording longer than 30 minutes. Another important question is whether the X4 has problems with overheating. When you switch to 8K mode, the camera warns you of possible overheating. However, I can give you the all clear and would say that the X4 does not have an overheating problem. Of course, any kind of overheating test does not correspond to real use and will always only be indicative. Here in the office at 22 degrees Celsius and with no movement, so no airflow or airstream, the X4 had no problems with overheating and recorded in 8K30 until the battery was empty, so for 1 hour and 15 minutes. However, it's of course difficult to predict how the camera will react at 30 degrees Celsius in summer. But despite 8K, it doesn't have the overheating problem we've seen with other action cameras in the past. One weak point of any body of a 360 camera are of course the protruding lenses. Insta360 has also come up with something new here. The X4 comes with two new lens guards that can be attached and removed quickly and easily. Most importantly, they are no longer glued on. This makes handling the lens guards much easier. However, this does not change the fact that you still have to activate the lens guards in the camera when you attach them, as they change the angle of the incident light. But the new lens guards are a clear improvement. Incidentally, they are included in the standard packaging and do not have to be purchased separately. There are also higher quality lens guards available as an accessory. The premium lens guards can also be simply screwed on. The X4 is waterproof up to 10 meters without an additional dive case. However, you should know that without a dive case, the X4 can only be used underwater in single lens mode, just like any other 360 camera. Lens stitching works underwater only with a very special dive case. And such a case is also available as an accessory for the X4. The larger body of the X4 not only enables a very long battery life, but also a slightly larger display. The display of the X4 is therefore relatively large, very bright and also very responsive. As is typical for 360 cameras from Insta360, it is arranged vertically. A particular strength of all Insta360 cameras, including the X4, is the software. The X4 comes with a large number of special software features. There will be a detailed tutorial in which I will explain all the important features. For example, it is interesting that the X4 can be controlled not only with voice commands, but also via gesture control. You can start and stop a recording or take a photo with hand movements. This also works with gloves, for example. The cool thing is that you don't have to stand directly in front of the camera. All that matters is that the camera can capture you from any angle. Even more interesting in my opinion are the many AI features of the X4. It's clear that the term AI is now used somewhat inflationarily in today's product presentations. But some of the features of the X4 definitely deserve the term. The app is now not only able to automatically create a clip with music, titles and its own rhythm from several recordings, there is also a brand new AI feature for editing and reframing individual shots. You can have individual recordings analyzed and the app then automatically creates various short reframed clips from this recording from which you can select and export the best ones. But there is also a feature for quick reframing. With quick you can simply select a subject with a tap and the app will then take over the reframing. Or you can tap on the capture button and then reframe the recordings by moving the smartphone or with your finger. So it's really simple. 
And of course, there is still a pro reframing feature in the app, which includes all kinds of effects and gives you all the freedom you need. I think Insta360 is trying to make it as easy as possible for the user to reframe a clip, because they are aware that the necessary reframing is now the only real disadvantage of a 360 recording. The new AI Highlights Assistant also makes it easier to automatically create clips from a number of shots. Similar to the Ace Pro, there is an AI Assistant that analyzes the scene during recording, recognizes subjects, and highlights important moments. The data collected in this way is saved and used by the app to automatically create clips. The camera itself also has a few very cool and interesting additional features. For example, recordings can be scheduled, there is a pre-recording feature, and failed recordings can be deleted immediately by pressing and holding the capture button. However, there is no pause function like on the Ace Pro for example. The Insta360 X4 does not capture GPS data itself, but you can connect it to a Garmin or Apple Watch, which can capture the GPS data of your recordings and also add other data to your videos. And the X4 also supports the GPS preview remote. This is a remote control that you can wear like a watch. It not only captures the GPS data, but also has a fully functional display that shows a preview image and allows you to change various settings. An external microphone can be connected to the X4 via USB-C, and headphones such as AirPods can also be connected via Bluetooth and then used as a microphone. However, I wouldn't overestimate this feature as the audio quality is rather average. As you have seen, the X4 comes with a variety of new features and in particular with an excellent 8K recording mode, which in my opinion is a game changer in the field of 360 cameras and perhaps even in the entire field of action cameras, because high resolution videos can now finally be exported from a 360 recording. The important question is therefore, how much does the X4 cost? The Insta360 X4 currently costs $500. You can find a link in the video description. Take a look at it. There are also different bundles. As I said, you will soon find a detailed comparison with the X3 on my channel. There will also be a comparison with the most important traditional action cameras such as the Hero 12 or the Action 4. And in a few days, there will be a detailed tutorial on all the features of the X4. So stay tuned and give me a like as feedback if this video was interesting for you. And see you next time.